Today we seem to be having a long day of fog. I love it. I enjoy the fog. It's challenging. You gotta admit, it gets a little cold. Coming outside is a little... But I like it. I wanted to take a few minutes to make a personal invitation. Something from me to you. You know, um, you could call it a confession, I guess, or a profession. You could call it an obsession of mine. <laughs> but um, we were talking about, my wife and I, this new project that kind of God laid on my heart. I was... It's funny how we use those expressions and we expect everyone to know what I mean. <laughs> but literally... It was about, oh, I don't know, I was in the bathtub and God was talking to me about something. I was amazed by recently a pastor that I found on the internet that I'd never met before, I'd never seen. He's a very interesting man. And I was touched by one of the videos that he shared. He was leaving a mega church, kind of, you know, for seeking the Lord and trying to figure out what God wanted him to do. There was such an honesty about him, such a truthfulness, such a sincerity, that I was dumbfounded by what I heard and what I saw. And it quickened <laughs> to my heart. It was like it, oh, I went, man, I know what that's like. It was like, oh, I've been there. <laughs> I, I, I got you. I hear you. And um, his name is Francis Chan. But, um, and I'm sure that he's gone on in ministry and done lots of things now. And he's found what the Lord was doing. But he was going through some personal time, I guess, and seeking what God wanted him to learn. Because a lot I've watched one or two of his videos since then, and a lot of his heart is sincere in the sense of saying, hey, you know, when I read it, I don't see exactly what we're doing as what he's saying. And he's real about it, you know, like, what do you think, you know? <laughs> Let's talk. And I enjoyed it so much that, you know, I kept it in the back of my mind. I didn't pay much attention to it. And, I used one of his videos, and now I, I put them on my my website for uh, Last Chance Bible Study. And, uh, oh, I put Chuck Smith and Francis Chan videos and Chuck Misser and some others. But I don't often get the time to spend personal development, you know, quality time to really grow in my personal discipleship, my personal desire to be more like Jesus, because frankly, I go to a church and usually wind up helping the church out. <laughs> doesn't help me out much. No offense to all those ministries I've been a part of or worked with or whatever, but you know, usually gave more than I got. And I don't know if it's because of the passion I have about really uh, on every word, every nuance of the scriptures or wanting God so much or what it is. But it always seemed that my passion was greater, my desire more so than those that I seem to be around. And they always like, wow, you know, treated me as though I were some kind of super Christian, which <laughs> God knows I'm not. <laughs> Far be it for me to be anybody special. But you know, it's kind of like when you're a light in the darkness, you know. It doesn't matter. If it's dark, you look like a light. <laughs> and you can't hide what you are. So, you know, in settings that I've been in, I guess, you know, I kind of look like a light. Kind of talk like a light. For them, I probably was a light. But, you know, inside, you know, I, I knew what I needed. And so... My wife, 
you know, I knew you needed to be involved in a church body and a church fellowship, you know, and needed to grow in that interdynamic, that unity of the body of believers that God has. And so I had taken her to different Calvary chapels and different churches, different times, and told her if I could find one where I could just be content, you know, that the Lord would just bless me and, and let me stay there, I'd go with her there. Well, <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Not there, obviously. But, and that's okay, as most calories will tell you. But she's going to a church, you know, that she enjoys and fellowships, and I personally think is all topical and, you know, guest speakers a lot, but not much, not much substance to me. But, you know, that's me. But I still wanted and desired in my heart to have some place that her and I could, you know, like, really enjoy together. And, you know, we could disciple or fellowship, you know, because there was a time where she was going to this little home Bible study that she was growing in. They were really cool up to a point where they got into some weird doctrines. And then when they started doing some weird things, she said she didn't feel comfortable about it. And I put my foot down. She didn't argue with me. She just agreed. I said, well, so if you don't feel comfortable and it's not scriptural, don't go there. They're just going off on a tangent and let them be who they're going to be. But it's not for you. The Lord must be taking in a different direction. So she prayed about it, and sure enough, no longer was going there, and just went to church instead. And on Sunday, and praise the Lord, you know, she enjoys it. And the church she's a part of, you know, is, you know, it's what it is. But I still had, and the Lord knew in my heart, something that I wanted to share with her, you know, that I would ask her, you know, when she came home from church, you know, well, how was church? Great. <laughs> just like just like you would say, good. You know, and most people will say, oh, the worship was great. You know, I really love this song or I enjoyed that song or whatever. You know, they do those kind of things. But where I came from, the way I was, we would get together afterwards, sometimes in an afterglow, and talk about what God was teaching us while the pastor was teaching everyone. You know, and we would talk about and kind of relate to the word as it was shared with us on Sunday all through the week. We would talk about it and discuss it and kind of go, man, you know that message on Sunday that was like about, you know, hey, you know, be content with whatsoever things that you have? Man, I was going through it the other day, you know, and suddenly it just hit me, you know, that all I got to do is just be happy with what I got, you know. And we'd do things like that, you know, we'd say things like God blessed our socks off or you know, God was, God was working in what he had told me on Sunday so that I could work out on Monday what it was that he was trying to show me on Tuesday. You know, and by Wednesday, I was thinking that everything was kind of cool. And by Thursday, I got tested on it. And by Friday, I kind of had it down. And by Saturday, I was like rejoicing. See what I mean? We were Jesus freaks. So, you know, I don't, no offense to Calvary chapels or any other services anywhere. But no offense to all of them. I don't see anybody doing it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I look at the campuses, you know. I look at the follow-up, you know, what little groups there are or something. You know, no offense to you guys, but I don't see any of you kind of like doing what, what I used to do. What some of us used to do. What we used to enjoy. And so, you know, I've always felt like kind of my... My personal discipleship wasn't stunted because being in the ministry, you share and share. And as you're giving out, you know, God's instructing you and by way of other people's experiences in life. And as you counsel and teach and pray and learn and develop and, and all that stuff, you know, you get ministered to yourself, you know, because God ministers to those that you know ministers. And that's nice, you know, but it still wasn't really what I wanted. You know, I wanted that that fun joy of interrelating with someone else about what we were learning together. And somewhat satisfied with in this ministry, the video ministry of sharing what God was doing in devotionals, I've enjoyed kind of like a taste of it again. But now God gave me afterwards. And I'm stoked. 
I'm inviting you to come along. I'm actually sharing with you and saying, hey, you know what? This is going to be good. This is cool. I'm, I'm really excited about this. And what it is, in a nutshell, is just what we do afterwards. In other words, what do you do after church? You know, what do you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, with the message that you heard on Sunday? What do you do afterwards? And that's spelled, you know, A-F-T-E-R-W-A-R-D-S. That's afterwards. Well, my wife and I want to share after words, meaning W-O-R-D-S, meaning like, hey, you just got out of the service, you know, you just watched this cool video, because we're going to use Chan's videos. We're going to pretend like we went to the service, so to speak. <laughs> you call it vicarious participation. That's how, quote unquote, these mega churches get away with campuses. You're vicariously participating in the spirit of the teaching ministry that, you know, is going on. And you're by way of somewhat interconnected <laughs> in some cyber way, vicariously participating in the same spirit that goes on. It, you know, you know, within a certain parameters, it, it's sort of true. But anyways, who cares? What we're doing is just watching a video, and afterwards, her and I, for ourselves, not for you, but for ourselves, talking about what we learned, or what we're learning, or what we want to apply to our life, or even what, who knows, might even pray about, I don't know. We're just letting it go with where it'll go. But I used to be one of those people that would, in a home Bible study, ask questions of others, even if I knew the answer, so that they would go in the same direction that I was heading. Like, well, or if they were heading in a different direction and I wanted to go there, I'd say, well, what about this? And they'd go, well, and I'd go, oh, really? Cool. And then I'd get the answer. So, in afterwards, we want to relate what's being said to our lives. We want to kind of record it so we could maybe see it also, you know, later on if something like really comes out that maybe, you know, because frankly, the Holy Spirit takes over sometimes for me and I don't know what I'm saying. God does. <laughs> then I watch it later. I go, cool. Look at that. That guy's cool. And it's me. <laughs> but in afterwards, we want to be able to just figure out, you know, you know, what you get, you know, and if you got something that I didn't get, I want to hear what you had to say and how Jesus related to you. And then, you know, I want to put it part of my life, you know, and I want it to be a part of your life. And I want to share that together, you know, with my wife. And in being believers, we should come to that place with someone else at some point in time where we could disciple one another. It used to be called like home Bible studies where we got intimate with each other, you know, and gosh, I remember I went to my first Calvary Chapel Bible study was before they had, it was part of the home Bible pastor's class. And everybody in that little home, <laughs> home Bible study got married except me. <laughs> Go figure. I think I kind of felt left out, so eventually I quit going. Oh well. But the intimacy that we can have always starts with our reality of sharing on a personal level what we learn and as long as you're sitting in a church and just listening to what the pastor says you're really not getting all that God intended for you maybe in afterwards as you watch us you'll try doing something for yourself afterwards in your church or in your body of believers or with your family maybe discussing afterwards what you got from the words that the pastor spoke or the man of God or the minister or the priest or the teacher maybe this will inspire you and help you to learn as opposed to listen maybe because what comes afterwards sometimes is more important than what came I wish I could say first words <laughs> what comes afterwards may be the most important thing that comes about in affecting your life for the rest of your life so I hope that maybe you'll take this introduction 
this personal invitation of mine, you know, my wife would would uh, be here to invite you personally, but she'll be in on the first one. And from then on, it'll be both of us. But I needed to set the stage, so to speak, to open the door, to admit, you know, that me personally, shucks, I was going to share the scripture from it too. And I already forgot where it's at. But me personally, I haven't really been growing in a sense of personal discipleship until I watched that video and I kind of felt like, oh, man, you know, this is something I want to apply to my life. This is what I would like to be. This I would like to become more like it than to this man of God that I see. And so when we were selecting or choosing this video person, you know, Francis Chan to watch, we decided as we watched one that both of us would be ministered to and that it would, you know, really greatly you know, challenge us to look at things in a different way. And my wife was blessed by it, so I'm kind of excited about it. And I, I wanted to admit, you know, like that, you know, I needed, I needed someone to come along that I couldn't see through all their fallacies and religious showmanship and look at them from behind the scenes because I've been behind the scenes in so many ministries. I know what's phony. You know, I know what's real. I know what's been sat down and programmed out and lined down. I'm a writer. You know, I know how people do things. You know, I know when there's a pulpit commentary being used or when there's a dissertation is being, you know, presented as rather instead of a teaching, quote unquote, but a, a uh, preaching really, which is what it is, you know, a preaching event where we say it's, you know, we need to remain quiet so that the Holy Spirit can inspire the teacher so that he can present the material that he's already prepared ahead of time that he's gotten from his studies and he's applied it together and it all comes together and that then we invite the Holy Spirit to, by way of the worship that set up the word in order to, for the people to hear so that they would always likewise get the same message out of what they're being taught so that they could put the pieces of whatever it is that they got from the Holy Spirit as they were listening to what was being spoken by the person who's supposedly teaching. Well, you know, if you called it preaching in the first place, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but it's not teaching. <laughs> Let's be real, it really isn't. So, I haven't really had anybody that really challenged me in a, in a really exciting and joyful way to see Jesus, you know, and get, ah, ooh, and even, whoa, you know, from, more often than not, I've been more like kind of, and you know, I, yeah, he missed that, and he didn't understand that, you know, he's just like, oh boy, you know, and my poor wife has had sometimes to listen to it, you know, and I've had to go, well, I'm not opposed to what they're doing, it's their ministry, they're growing, you know, but it's like, you know, you see the stages that they're still at, and it's kind of what they're doing, and you kind of go, you know, I've already been in the crib, I don't want to suck my thumb, you know, I've already tasted the bottle, I really don't want to go there, you know, you just want to find the place that you fit in some way, that you are motivated, that you are challenged, and that you were brought to a humility and a excitement to look forward to being redeveloped, so to speak, into all that God intended you to be. And I think afterwards it's going to do that for me. So I'm excited. I'm kind of stoked. I look forward to seeing these videos and to watching them. Oh, and I think, now I'm just praying about it still, but it looks like we're going to record them on uh, Wednesday night, probably. It may not be Wednesday that you see them on your timetable, because <laughs> while we record them on Wednesday night, I don't think I'm going to put a, a date on them, you know, because I don't know when I'll get them posted, you know, but we'll record them probably every Wednesday night, so we have kind of a midweek service going for ourselves. And then hopefully get them up by either Wednesday late night or Thursday, or, you know, 
Friday, but since they won't have a date, they'll just have a title on them. And the way that it'll work is that we're going to post our video of us with, you know, afterwards. It'll have a title called Afterwards with a colon and then whatever the title is. And then underneath it, in comments, will be a link to the video we watched. So what you can do if you want to participate with us is you can actually find it on the web page. There'll be a web page for afterwards. And you could click on the link and watch the video first. Cool. You know, then you get kind of your own shtick, so to speak, of whatever it is the Holy Spirit is teaching you. Then, if you really want to, you could afterwards watch our afterwords and see what we got out of it and what maybe you get out of it also. <laughs> maybe that'll be a bunch of us. Well, I'll be running around getting afterwards. <laughs> maybe this will be a national movement. Oh, go away. Who cares? <laughs> It's about you and it's about me and it's about really right now it's only about me I'm only interested in what I'm gonna get out of it I want to be growing you know and I'm kind of feeling like this is my ah, finally a breath of fresh air so that's the way that it's designed and everything that I do in my life I try to involve others if they want to participate they don't hey go go be blessed you know go do what you, what you get blessed in you know if you like what you got go do it you know what I mean <laughs> Whatsoever the Lord tells you to do, that's you should do. But if you really want to kind of get into it, you know, afterwards, hey, try it. Take take the idea, you know, run with it. You know, make it your own. I don't care what you call it. If it's yours, it's yours. You know, you want to put a copyright on it and run with it, God will take care of you. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is take the principle, take the idea. Recognize that what you heard on a Sunday isn't meant for Sunday and Monday, but it's meant for all through your week or until you meet again. So, as I would say, you know, let that thought that was in Christ Jesus be also in you. And though he humbled himself and became like a man, not robbery, but, you know, to be equal with God, but rather humbled himself so that he would be even made lower than the angels. And, we, who are men of God, maybe, if you're a minister out there, or a teacher, or an elder, or a deacon, or whatever type of, quote-unquote, authority and position that you're in, and you know it all, maybe, if you humble yourself, even though you know it all, and become likened unto Jesus, and use kind of one of these principles that I just mentioned in afterwards, you might disciple your congregation into a flock of pastors or a congregation of ministers that could go out into the world and change the world if you choose to inspire them by maybe conspiring a little bit to be as wily as serpents and gentle as lambs in developing a way to help someone like my wife and I'm doing for myself but for my wife too to be brought deeper into the Word of God because it's afterwards that we really get into what God has in store for us all this right now man it's just window dressing I'm looking forward to what's afterwards aren't you